everybody always has that one person that's just stuck in their butt. I am here today with Juliana Pena ahead of her main event trilogy fight against Amanda Nunes here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada on June 10th. That is UFC 289. Juliana Pena, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, I am from Vancouver. You originating from Spokane, Washington, the Pacific Northwest taking over. I'm very excited to see it happen. Um, now, I know that you're probably overdue for some physio. You're feeling like your back hurts carrying the weight of the promotion for this fight, and I thank you for doing it today. Um, you know, ever since we've seen you and Amanda sort of mix it up um, and start off this trilogy, I feel like we've seen this charismatic side of Juliana really sort of um, come to the forefront. And obviously that comes from within, but who are some of your inspirations that you've sort of drawn on when figuring out how to bring out that entertainer that's inside of you? You know, I definitely think that Ric Flair, Mike Tyson um, are definitely some some inspiration uh, people that I draw from. Charlotte Flair is one of them as well. Uh, I, I really love uh, the way that they can pull you in to want to wanna watch them, you know, and just have uh, such a way with words and, uh, you know, show how strong the mind is. And so those are definitely some of my heroes that I'm looking up to in terms of trying to sell the fight and get those butts in seats. Well, I know yours are a little heavier, but we need to get you some sort of WWE belt here to go along with the UFC one that you have behind you. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. I would love to cross over and, and be a tag team with Charlotte so that we can kick Ronda's and Shayna's butt. That'd be awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, you know, I've seen, you know, scrolling through the Instagram. Uh, I know you and Ric Flair have connected on a few times. Let me jump ahead then. What are some of the long term aspirations for you when, you know, when it's time to step away from the octagon, either temporary or full time? What are some of the other things you're looking to do in this greater entertainment sphere? Uh, definitely would love to cross over to the WWE at some point. You know, I know that we just merged companies into one. And so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how that's going to like uh, affect the UFC fighters in some sort of way. I know that we have uh, some guys like, you know, I've seen Daniel Cormier referee in the WWE. I've seen, um, I was so sorry, I just got a text message. I've seen uh, people like Logan Paul get in there, people like Johnny Knoxville, people that are, you know, you wouldn't think are like WWE stars, but they were able to to do that to cross over. And so I, I think uh, especially being friends with Charlotte and, and Rick um, and doing a tag team against Ronda, somebody who wouldn't fight me in the UFC uh, with Shayna, somebody who I beat in the UFC uh, would be an awesome crossover. And uh, I would love for that to, to come to fruition one day. You know, for some of the fans who may not be super familiar with the sort of day in, day out of the UFC, when we talk about Amanda Nunes, we're talking about arguably, historically, the greatest female fighter in UFC history, statistically at least, you know. You're the only person to beat her in the last eight years. She's checked off Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, Holly Holm, Valentina Shevchenko twice. What has it done for your career to be that one blemish that she has had in these last eight years the only one to really bring up be able to put a fight to her in nearly a decade you know everybody always has that one person that's just stuck in their butt and uh <laughs> that's me for amanda and, and i know that she knows that and i think at the end of the day she's probably really thankful for you know me making her relevant again when i beat her because no one really cared about amanda nunes because she was just stomping everybody out and knocking them out in the first round so i think that they were excited to see somebody come in and stop her dead in her tracks with uh dominance and i think that they were excited to see the savagery and the heart and uh, that I had the determination to never giving up in the second fight. And, and unfortunately for me, I, I ran out of time. Um, so I think that she's probably thankful that we're getting to do this uh, trilogy because I think that it just once again elevates her as, you know, like you said, that, you know, going down as a Hall of Famer is the greatest of all time. Although I don't subscribe to that. I know that there's a lot of people that do. And for me, it just makes everything more sweeter for when I go and I get my hand raised in victory. 
You upset Amanda in the first fight. She managed to make the adjustments necessary to reclaim the title in the second. So now the ball is in your court. Uh, what went wrong for you in that second fight? And what are some of the adjustments? I know we can't give away too much of the game plan, but what are some of the things you took from that fight knowing that you need to uh, sort of re-examine heading into this trilogy? You know, one of the things that I think that I was not prepared for at all, and I'll just be honest, let's call a spade a spade. I wasn't thinking that she was going to go home and change her entire game plan and come out a completely different fighter. And then for her to have the discipline to stay in that southpaw stance, even when things were getting hairy for her, you know, I, I tip my hat off to her for that because she did a very uh, great job in being able to make the adjustments and change her entire fighting style. And I think that it also just goes to show how threatened she is by me and how serious of a threat she um, takes me. And so for me, it was a little bit of a, you know, feather in my cap for them, for me to know, you know, girl, you're scary. You know, these people are afraid of you. <laughs> literally going to do everything that they can to try to stop you because they know that I'm the real deal. They know that I am literally going to give every last ounce of everything that I have in order to, to, to win. And so I think that that main uh, thing right off the bat completely threw me off and I was never able to make that adjustment from, from seeing her in that southpaw stance. I, I had never got ready for that. I remember at one point somebody came out as a southpaw and one of my coaches was like, if you can't stand like a man to get out of here, you know, leave the camp. And so after the fight, they were like, well, that was stupid, you know? And so I've now seen southpaws. I've seen orthodox. I've seen orthodox southpaws. I'm getting ready for all of it. The only thing, uh, no, I won't say the only thing I won't be ready for. I will also be ready for Amanda when she comes out walking on her head in her hands. I, you know, you read my mind exactly, right? I guess I read yours. Well, we'll see. You know, we've seen John Jones kind of crawl across the ring. So who knows what Amanda's going to bust out. But Juliana Pena will be ready for it. Um, Before we wrap up on some lighter stuff away from the fight, you know, you mentioned how you don't necessarily subscribe to the rhetoric that... Uh, Amanda Nunes is the GOAT. I mean, you're right up there in the division and uh, you're looking to take her out. With a win over Amanda Nunes, too, the only person who has ever beaten her twice, what do you think that says about your place in the conversation for the great, greatest fighters of all time? I, I got to get a, a Hall of Famer place card in there at some point, you know what I mean? Just out of, out of sheer... Sure, uh, putting on amazing matches. You know, I feel like I shook the world the first time and the second time I feel like I still shook the world. I don't feel like my stock went down at all in that second fight. I feel like my stock, uh, you know, stayed the same or even went higher in terms of just being a savage, you know? And I think that that's kind of indicative of who I am as a fighter. I'm always laying it out on the line. I'm always giving it everything that I've got. I put on exciting fights. And, um, you know, I hit really hard as well. And so I think that for me, it definitely, Goat Slayer, uh, something like that, some sort of rhetoric like that needs to be put out there, um, you know, maybe like New Goat or something like that. But for me, you know, I, I, yeah, like you said, I've, I've never bought into this rhetoric of, of the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time doesn't get absolutely dominated and taken out in the second round and taps the mat and says, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. That's not what the greatest does. And I've seen her be mount punched. I've seen her get her, her face mount punched off. Um, against Kazangano as well. So for when we talk about greatest of all times, we're talking like, you know, people that you've never seen lose like Khabib or, you know, so, somebody like that. Um, but, you know, everybody loses, every dog has its day. And, you know, I'm just continuing on my trek and trying to be ultra focused on myself and what I have to do and and really honing in on my skill set so that I can perform and showcase what I've been working on on June 10th. I have a good feeling for that WWE run when it comes. Before then, UFC 289, Saturday, June 10th, Rogers Arena in my backyard of Vancouver. Juliana Pena, Amanda Nunes, three for the Women's Bantamweight Championship. Last thing before I let you go here, I want to give you a bit of a break. I know you got this media gauntlet talking UFC, 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 so I want to ask you some stuff away from the fight game, okay? Sure. All right, let's do it. First and foremost, what is your guilty pleasure TV show? You know it's not very good, but you just can't get enough. Uh, I, I'll tell you what my current one is right now for sure. It's uh, Love is Blind. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's horrible, but it's so good. It's, 
it's horrible, but it's good. So yeah, love is blind for sure right now. Other than that, I, I honestly, I don't get a lot of time to watch TV. I haven't sat on my couch in like two months. So sometimes you need it, right? Just, you just, right. You just need a bit of reality TV in your life. Um, your shirt says eat clean, but let's say you're just having a really bad day. What's the dinner and dessert that's going to be that therapy for you? Um, my dinner, any sort of uh, pasta, spaghetti with meatballs, uh, lasagna. I love lasagna. Lasagna is like my favorite. Um, you know, my mom makes uh, the best arepas. I love a home cooked Venezuelan meal. Um, and I, I love tacos, you know, so th there's there's no denying that. And, um, you know, there's a little ice cream store uh, around Chicago land around here. It's called La Michoacana. And they have like the best ice cream and it's so good. You get the horchata, the ice cream. I mean, if you want to talk about a guilty pleasure, you head down to La Michoacana and, and get a bunch of ice cream. So so that's those are definitely two of my favorite, uh, you know, guilty pleasures when it comes to eating. Oh. I'm always down to shout out a local business, too. So good on you there. Uh, if any actress could star in the Juliana Pena movie, who would it be? Oh, gosh. Um... I, I don't know, you know, there's been so many people in the past that have compared me to um, some, some, some people, I would say, I'll give you the four that I've gotten uh, in the okay. past. Uh, so one is, um, for some reason, they used to say that I look like Eva Mendez on The Ultimate Fighter. And then um, Rosario Dawson has been another one. And then uh, I think Michelle Rodriguez has been another one. And I think the fourth one is, this is going to sound weird because she's very light, more light skinned, but um, somebody told me that I, uh, J Jennifer, um, she's married, she used to be married to Ben Affleck, uh, Garner, Jennifer Garner, but I don't, I don't see the Jennifer Garner, but somebody told me that back in the past, they said I look like Jennifer Garner. There's sometimes where I see a picture of her and I'm like, oh, I thought that I kind of look like me. But um, I think I, obviously I'm just, you know, fishing at this point because I haven't really found one person. Oh, maybe Jordan Sparks, maybe the winner of the American Idol from back in the day. But overall, yeah, I, I think those are the ones that people have told me that I look like. But I don't I don't necessarily, you know, subscribe to me looking like any of them. I would love to play myself. Can not I play myself? Let's do it. I mean, we, we, you've got a filmography going. I've seen the IMDb, so let's do it. Why yeah, not? let's do it. Okay, well, okay, let's flip that question a little bit then. Last couple. If you could have a role in any movie franchise or TV series, what would it be? Which show or movie? Um, Night Agent. Have you seen that? I have not, but my family has, and they rave about it. Yeah, yeah. I really liked Night Agent. I'm all talking how I don't have time to watch TV. Um, and that like just came out. Um, Night Agent was great. Uh, I loved that. And then um, I think that's the only one that I could think of right now, because I feel like in my like okay. past life, I've always wanted to be like some sort of like secret agent, like like a working security for the president or like a cop or something like that. I think I'd make it like an awesome cop in, in a show um, or like a detective or something like that. Cause you know, I'm, I'm super detective-y. Um, so, so something involving uh, law enforcement for sure. I like it. Put a camera in the glasses, you know, you're already dressed in black. We're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what is your go-to karaoke song? I mean, maybe you've had one too many drinks. Um, anything by Queen or Journey, yes. but my number one of all time is uh, Blue by You by Linda Ronstadt. 